In lesson six, we'll do some review of some different types of algebraic equations. Just a little bit of history on algebra. The Arabs were kind of like the founders of algebra. A man named Muhammad al Khwarizmi was the one who is credited basically with founding algebra and he had a book that he wrote that dealt with the science of transposition, basically the science of al-Jabr. It's the transposition. That's where the word algebra comes from. And think about transposition. That's like changing sides, moving things from one side of an equation to another. Moving and canceling, transposing and canceling things on in an equation. That's the fundamentals of what algebra is about. Today we basically think in terms of algebra, the transposition, and we have a little different way of thinking about it. We have these two rules that are super fundamental to algebra. You might want to write these in your formula book that you have. The addition rule, same quantity can be added to both sides of an equation. It doesn't change it. It doesn't change the it just changes the way it looks, doesn't change your value or your solution. And the multiplication division rule, both sides of an equation can be multiplied or divided by the same non-zero quantity. That doesn't change your solution to the equation at all. It just changes the way it looks. We'll be applying those two main rules plus a few others as we do any algebra equation. Remember deductive reasoning, that's the application of a rule. And did you know that applying a rule like that to different situations that that's a, a that's an indication of wisdom. So if you can do this, if you can do these algebra relationships, apply these rules here to learn new things to solve new problems, that is a indication that you are a wise person. Let's start our review here of algebra equations with fractional equations and let's look at this practice problem and do this one best thing to do is write this practice problem down first and that's always like what I like to do when I'm solving an equation is write the equation down first and then you can use that kind of like a pattern to help you solve the problem now we'll be applying our addition rule and our multiplication division rule as we do this problem but on a fractional equation the first thing we want to do on those we have a new rule that we want to think about and that is get rid of the fraction first that's the first thing we want to do on a fractional equation the reason we want to get rid of the fraction first is that just simplifies the problem it's easier to work with a problem that doesn't have fractions in it and so we do that we get rid of the fraction by multiplying every term by the least common multiple of the denominators so it's an application of the multiplication division rule. We can multiply every term by the same non-zero quantity. And in this case, it would be 3 times 5 or 15 times x minus 4. That would be our least or lowest common multiple. That's the multiple that all three denominators have in common. So we multiply every term by 15 times x minus 4. And then we go back through and we cancel and we get rid of our denominator. So here we can simplify that to a 5 over 1 and here the x minus 4's would cancel. Here that will simplify to a 3 over 1. Now you might want to use a different color pen like I'm doing here on the extra parts of the problem where we're adding in the least common multiple and multiplying by that just so you can kind of differentiate it from the original problem. So now we'll end up with 4 times 5 is 20 times x minus 4 minus 5 times 15 which would be 75 is equal to 1 times 3 is 3 times x minus 4. We'll go ahead and expand all of our relationships. Our main goal in these problems is solving for the unknown value, solving for x. We apply our algebra rules to help us reach that goal, to find a new truth about this problem. So now we have 20 times x minus 4 is 20x 
minus 80 minus 75 is equal to 3 times x is 3x minus 12. Let's use, or let's just keep simplifying here. 20x minus 155 is equal to 3x minus 12. Let's get the x values on the left side there. So we could subtract 3x from both sides. We could just do that in our head and know that we would end up with 17x on the left. Add 155 to both sides. That's a little bit more complicated to do in our head. So I'll just write that down. That cancels right there on the left and we end up with 143. So x equals 143 over 17. This is just some fundamental algebra skills that you need to have is be able to simplify an equation, solve an equation that has fractions in it. Let's look at another type of equation, radical equations. On these kinds of problems we need to square both sides to get rid of the radical signs. That's one of the extra steps that we do besides our basic fundamental multiplication, division, addition, subtraction rules. Now, solving a problem like this, it, you may never have to do this again. Even, even if you're in engineering, there may not be any real direct immediate application for doing something like this. Maybe there will be, but maybe not. The most important thing is that you are developing good deductive reasoning skills because that's how God has designed your brain to be able to apply rules, especially his commands, and apply those to new situations and be wise. Think of algebra as practice with your reasoning skills, practicing your reasoning skills, learning how to solve problems effectively and efficiently so that you can be a wise person in God's world. Look at this problem. Think about it. What we want to do here is solve for S. And the first step that you should do when you have more than one radical sign like this is isolate the one where you have more than one term inside the radical sign. In other words, the square root of s minus 64. Isolate that on one side. And then square both sides. So let's just put some different color parentheses on here. Square both sides. Think about what happens on the right there. What you can do is expand that out to solve it. So on the left you end up with s minus 64. That's what happens when you square the square root, right? You get rid of the radical sign. That's why we're squaring, is to get rid of the radical sign. You have s minus 64 equals 16 minus the square root of s twice. And you can expand that out s minus 64 is equal to 16 times 16 that would be 256 minus uh, 16 times the square root of s there's two of those in there right minus 32 times the square root of s is what it ends up being because remember what you do when you're doing problems like this you take the those two terms have to be multiplied together and those two terms have to be multiplied together as well. That's how you get negative 32 times the square root of s. And then lastly, we need to multiply minus square root of s and minus square root of s. That would just give us a positive s. So look at that. The s's cancel because those are similar terms. We can simplify this down to isolate the square root of s, add a negative 256 to both sides and we end up with a negative 320 on the left is equal to negative 32 times the square root of s divide both sides by a negative 32 we end up with a 10 on the left equals the square root of s square both sides we'd say that a hundred equals s that's what s equals 100 Look at the original equation. It's a good idea to check your work on a problem like that. You can always figure out if you really did the answer right by verifying it. Verify means check the truth of 
what you just did. So put 100 back into the original equation, you'd have 100 minus 64 is 36. Square root of 36 is 6. And then plus a square root of 100, which would just be 10. 6 plus 10 does equal 16. So we did that problem correctly. Do you remember what these are called here? That I'm circling in red. Those two expressions are in parentheses are called binomials. We expanded those binomials out. You expand them by multiplying the first term in the left binomial by the two terms in the right binomial. Then the second term in the left binomial by the two terms in the binomial on the right. That's how you expand. Now let's solve a system of three linear equations. You've already been doing some problems in this book in the homework sets on systems of two linear equations. And hopefully those have been familiar to you because you've done those in Algebra 2. You apply what you know about systems of two linear equations plus the other basic algebra rules, the addition rule and the multiplication division rule, to solve these systems of equations. Remember what you do with systems of equations. You're always looking for something to substitute into Look for one equation that you can substitute into the other one. And sometimes you have to rearrange them in order to do that. So what I like to do on problems like this is look at the, find the simplest equation that I can and substitute that in to one of the other equations. Do that first and get it down to a system of two equations and two unknowns and then we can solve it. So right now we have x minus z equals negative 1 in the middle there. That we could rearrange to say x equals z minus 1. Just adding a z to both sides gives us that. Take that and let's substitute z minus 1. I'll just circle it. That's the same thing as x in this system of equations. Substitute it in for x in that top equation. And so let's go ahead and do that. We'll have 2 times z minus 1 plus 3y equals 1. Simplify that. 2z minus 2 plus 3y equals 1. 2z plus 3y. Add a 2 to both sides and we get a 3 on the right. 2z plus 3y equals 3. Now of our three equations that we have, the bottom equation 2y minus z equals 5 let me just put a box around our original set of equations here. 2y minus z equals negative 5. That is also in terms of y and z. So let's write it underneath 2z plus 3y equals 3. Let's get the letters or variables in the same order. So I'll just say instead of 2y minus z, I'll say minus z plus 2y equals negative 5. Now we have two equations here and two unknowns. And we can solve that system of equations. So let's go ahead and do that. What we could do on the bottom, we could multiply everything by a 2. We multiply everything by 2, we end up being able to cancel the z's because we'd have minus 2z plus 4y equals negative 10. And we can add that equation to the top equation there. The z's cancel. We get 7y equals 3 plus a negative 10 is negative 7y equals a negative 1. Now we know what y is. Let's go back and, and solve for x and for z now. Go back to our original set of equations. Look at the bottom one. 2y minus z equals negative 5. Substitute y in. y equals negative 1 into that equation. We have 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 minus z equals negative 5. And then we could rearrange this. Add a 2 to both sides. Minus z equals negative 3 because we added positive 2. 5 and a Negative 5 and positive 2 is a negative 3. 
the negatives would cancel and we get z equals 3. So y is negative 1, z is 3, and then look over here that we have circled in yellow. x equals z minus 1, or x equals 3 minus 1, so x equals 2. There's our three answers. Y is negative 1, Z is 3, X is 2. Let's check our work on this problem. Let's just substitute back into the top equation. Substitute X and Y in there and see if these are really the solutions. X is 2, so we'd have 2 times 2 is 4. Plus 3 times negative 1 would be a negative 3. That does equal 1. So that gives us confidence we did that problem correctly. That's always what you can do, always on any algebra equation problem. When you get the answer, substitute it back in to verify it. Make sure that what you just did was the right way to do it. In the book of Acts, that's what the Bereans did. They didn't just take Paul at his word when he told them things. They checked the scripture to make sure what he was saying was true. They verified what he was saying. In the same way here, check to make sure that what you are doing is correct. Verify your results for an equation. You can do that on any algebra equation. Substitute your answer back in to the original equation to make sure that it was solved correctly. Okay, well that's all for lessons.